Hi guys, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Carolina and I work with data. I've also created Data Appreciation Society, so if you're a data enthusiast, feel free to join us on Discord server, which I'm linking in the description below. I've got two things to tell you today. The first one is that NLP has become so easy that a 10-year-old kid could do it and I'm going to prove it to you. And the second thing is that Hugging Face, which is a huge, very popular library of pre-trained models, has released a completely free NLP course last week. I'm probably going to go through it myself and I thought I'll just let you know because I think it's pretty cool. But let me come back to the point that NLP has become so, so easy to do. Okay, if you are a researcher whose job is to improve the mathematical models behind NLP, then yes, your job is hard and it is intellectually stimulating. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about practicing NLP. What I'm saying is that if you are someone who wants to build a cool web app that does something cool, you know, NLP related, then the NLP bit is the last thing you have to worry about. Okay, let me present you with a few proofs. Okay, let's start from sentiment. How many times have you heard people talking about finding a sentiment from text, like from tweets, for example? Knowing how to derive sentiment might have been arcane knowledge five years ago, but today it is a two-liner in Python. Done. Another fantastic NLP application, classification. Imagine you're running a news and media company like BBC. BBC has been around for 99 years. So actually it's a big year for BBC next year. But anyway, I'm digressing. Throughout the last century, BBC must have written thousands, if not millions of articles. Now imagine that you're a director of BBC and you are opening up those archives for people. So basically you are giving access to all the historical articles ever written by BBC. And here's the interesting bit. You would like to group them by categories. Okay, but you have a million of historical articles to classify. So how are you gonna do it? Well, you have two choices. A, you're either gonna hire a bunch of interns and make them suffer, or two, you will use this two-liner. which is cheaper and no interns are hurt in the process. Okay, proof number three that NLP has become super easy. Have you heard of NLP algorithms, machine learning, AI, replacing journalists by writing super smart, indistinguishable articles by itself without any human input? Sounds a little futuristic, hard impossible? Sounds like something you can't do unless you have a PhD. Again, two-liner. Let's give this algorithm one sentence. In this course, we are going to teach you. And let's see how this algorithm is going to finish the sentence. Of course, of course, of course. This is far from perfect and you wouldn't publish it anywhere. This is just to show you that you can access and harness the generative power of NLP models with two lines of code. A kid could do it. Next example. Ever heard of named entity recognition? Again, does it sound like something you can't do unless you are a seasoned data scientist? Now imagine this. You are the head of digital technologies at Amazon, if a title like that exists, and you are responsible for the chatbot that answers people's queries about returns and missing parcels and all that kind of stuff. Now, you have a number of teams of consultants that specialize in various areas, for example, based on customer location or a type of problem. Named entity recognition can help classify a complaint based on those various factors. And then the complaint can be automatically transferred to the team that should handle it without any need for human interference. Nice and efficient. Or nice because efficient. I like efficiency. Now, I think it won't come as a surprise to you 
if I tell you that this can be done in two lines of code. In this simple example, you can see that the algorithm is able to recognize whether a given part of the sentence is a name, organization or location. You probably got my point by now, but I have one more cool example of what a 10-year-old kid could do with NLP. And that example is summarization. Let's say our 10-year-old kid doesn't feel like reading all his set books for his literature class, because frankly, who likes being forced to read set books? And our smart, technology-savvy 10-year-old kid comes up with a great idea to use a two-liner in Python to summarize those books into a way shorter piece of text. Okay, enough of examples. I think my point is clear. Using NLP is trivial. It really is. But let me just stress the point using. You can use it in a sense that you have no idea about what's going on under the hood and you have no control over the accuracy of those models. Doing the real NLP, where you actually study the models and you understand the maths behind them, is a completely separate topic. So please don't come after me, <laughs> researchers in the world. But if you want to build a startup that has AI in the name, you can pretty much do it after watching this video today. Or maybe not, don't do it. In case you actually want to understand what's going on under the hood behind those models, like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, Hugging Face released a completely free NLP course and they teach you all about transformers and all the maths and theory behind those models. I'm linking this in the description below, but if you are more into data engineering rather than NLP or data science, then don't worry, I have a bunch of data engineering resources for you as well, and I'm linking a completely free PDF which collates all those resources in the description below. That's it everyone, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye!